This Chinese female physicist was crucial to the development of the nuclear bomb, but of course she was left out of the movie Oppenheimer, but today she's kind of going viral and she's getting a lot of recognition. So let's talk about her. Yeah, we're talking about Chen Sheng Wu. Andrew, she got left out of the movie. A lot of people are debating it was because, you know, she was a woman. It's because she's Chinese. There was another debate about a Chinese person contributing to the development of the Manhattan Project, which ultimately resulted in nuclear bombs getting dropped on Japan. So, you know, a lot of discussions to go a lot of different places. All right, everybody. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys, especially if you guys like our commentary. Uh, who was Miss Wu? I mean, let's let's talk about it. She was born in Jiangsu. She got educated in Suzhou. She studied at Nanjing National University, then went on to San Francisco and studied at the University of Berkeley. But... But she originally got recruited to University of Michigan, right? And but she, she turned it down reportedly because they were too sexist. And of course, Berkeley at the time, it was a lot more liberal and it still is. So in March of 1944, and this is what she did for the Manhattan Project, uh, Wu was recruited uh, to Columbia University where she helped develop the process for separating uranium, which is obviously part of the bomb exploding. You're talking about the yellow cake. Yeah, yeah. So I the mean, yellow person helped... Separate the yellow cake. <laughs> she helped bake the yellow cake. I know that's uh, this whole situation is not super funny, but I mean, let's just laugh at it now. Um, she helped solve a problem involving an isotope's chain reaction that stumped the other scientists. Uh, she was referred to at, as Miss Wu. And like, if other scientists had questions, people were like, go ask Miss Wu. Miss Wu is one of the most talented physicists I've ever met. That's what other- And apparently, yeah, she was able to call Oppenheimer himself Oppie. And Oppenheimer called her Jie Jie, which means older sister in Mandarin. But how come they didn't put that in the movie? It'd be too crazy, right? And in the middle of the Oppenheimer movie, he's just like, hey, hey, Jie Jie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, I'm sure there's some creative liberties that Christopher Nolan took. And I'm sure there was other types of scientists that were actually involved. You know, as we know, guys, whether you're a woman, you're Asian, you're a minority, black, uh, you're oftentimes... You know, history in America, it doesn't always tell your full story. Well, it's told by the victors, right? And right. the victors are what? Or Some tall white guys. Yeah, it's always, or it's told by the perspective of tall white guys, whether you guys are on the same team right, or not. Right, right. You know? I'm sure that the people would have like not denied it, the people who wrote the script of Oppenheimer, but they were probably would have been like, ah, you know, we just didn't have room to fit that storyline. <laughs> who in would we have casted? Do we have to cast Michelle Yeoh again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get into the comments section because of course, David, there's a... There's a lot of uh, different comments. Yeah, out there. so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Let's get into it. Somebody said Whoopenheimer. Because obviously, uh, Barbenheimer is like a trending meme right now, which is really funny. Anything, Andrew, historical, because they're, uh, you know, I think the Oppenheimer stuff, you know, it's 1940s. Barbie was 1960s. All of it's going viral right now. No, it's because, big. because the movies are big, right? Yeah, is it interesting that the movie, as something as crazy as a Hollywood movie, could re spark some serious interest? In like yeah. this Chinese American woman from Suzhou's contributions to American projects. Yeah, and I and I want to be honest. Even though she's left out of the movie because the movie is so popular right now, it is true. That's probably the reason why we're talking about her. It's not that other Asian Americans didn't know who she was. If you were into Asian scientist history, you did know her. But I'm not gonna lie. I did not really know about her. Right, right. right? So I think it's cool that. It's brought forth, and now we're talking Do about it. Do you think they left out Wu Jianxiong at all? Because, you know, even though back in the 1940s, America and China were on the same side, actually against Japan, things nowadays in 2023, it's uh, sort of like America and China I, being rivals or You know, frenemies. it's kind of like creative liberties, and I'm not exactly sure why she's left out. Maybe they figure, yo, we're only going to write in the top four scientists, and she was number five. So, you know, she just didn't make the cut, and it might be weird to just have a Chinese lady in the back. I don't know if she's in the background. Anybody who watched the movie, let me know. But as far as I know, she's not featured. Somebody says, uh, Lies Meitner discovered nuclear fission. Dude stole her work. She was erased from history like so many female scientists. Justin's for Lies Meitner and all of the women that we forgot about. Somebody said, Chinese Madame Curry, bruh, they couldn't just call her Wu Jianxiong. Well, you know, I mean, it's a hard name to pronounce. But, yeah, it's interesting that there's a Chinese Madame Curry, Andrew, but nobody knows about her, right? Right. Um, somebody's saying there's no discovery or invention credited to um, white men that wasn't heavily investigated or influenced by research done by a woman or POC. And then somebody said she would have been best friends with uh, Rosalind Franklin, who is another famous uh, UK female scientist who people say was overlooked. Mm -hmm. And then someone said if she was white, she would have been famous. And someone said, no, it was more of a woman thing. And this turned into a whole argument, Andrew, about do you think that the accomplishments 
of uh, both women and minorities are overlooked, or is one more than the other, or is this even a relevant discussion? Uh, it's hard to say which one is more overlooked, but they're definitely both overlooked. And yeah, even if she was a white woman on the team, I actually don't think she's going to be that famous either. To be honest. Right, right, because you're saying in the 1940s and the 1950s, people minimized the accomplishments of women on the yeah, team. Yeah, she might be They're more famous. Their uh, supports that. Yeah, right? I would say she'd be more famous, but no, not that famous. And honestly, it was just, unfortunately, that's the way it is. But I think it's cool now that with history now, we can all look back and see all the minorities and all the women and all the, even other men who maybe got their credit taken away too, you, you know? You start talking about like Nikola Tesla or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, like Tesla, exactly. What the, what the whole Tesla brand, that's why people are talking about Nikola Tesla and even arguing, oh, he was actually better than uh, Edison. Edison, man. yeah. So this said, all social issues are inter interconnected. When you invalidate one by saying others are more important, you've invalidated all of them. There's no metric to measure importance. Um, you can't divorce all these issues from each other because they're all sort of connected on the same train. And then someone has said, look up intersectionality. Do you think that's true? Because yeah, I mean, this kind of goes back to the discussion of was she ignored because she was a woman or because she was a POC? I mean, I think you could go back and forth about it, but I think the key is you recognize her now and you have this debate and talk about her. Let's just talk about her. Right. Like, this is what we're doing. We're celebrating her now. Whether you like the fact that she helped develop the nuclear bomb, whether you agree with the droppings of the bomb, you know, or you right. agree... The morality of the development of the technology, yeah. Or right? whether or not you think Oppenheimer is even a good movie or not, regardless, we are praising a... Asian female who was in STEM, who at, a, at right. a time- Highly, highly, highly accomplished. At a time when there was like barely any women. And she actually fought a lot against sexism in her later career as well. Yeah. Um, do you think, somebody said, all scientists steal each other's work and build on it. This is nothing new. It has nothing to do with her race or her gender. This is just something that right. happens in the sciences. So, so some of the argument was like, oh, Oppenheimer used her work and didn't give her credit um, because she's like an Asian woman, you know? And uh, it is true that in the scientific field, though, obviously science builds on science. So it's like, you know, but I guess... I, I do think probably more credit could have been given. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult to say, Andrew. This is sort of a little bit of an aside, but you know, in handles in the NBA, everybody's always like, yo, he took that guy's crossover and then he added like another hezzy to it. And that became way more famous than the original crossover he based it on. And I'm just like, yeah, it's tough to say because the development of an art form, everybody's going to be influenced by what came before it. Yeah, exactly. Somebody said, fun facts, Madame Wu married into the infamous Yuan family. This is at UC Berkeley, her husband, Luke, that she met, Andrew. Her husband was uh, the grandson of Yuan Shikai, the second president of the Republic of China and the would-be Hongxian emperor of the Empire of China. So basically, Andrew, had Sun Yat-sen's vision like kept intact, she would marry the grandson of the person who would have inherited the whole thing. Interesting. Somebody said Oppenheimer is a trash movie that continues to reinforce the ishi American propaganda used to justify the uses of the atomic bomb against Japan. And then someone said, yay, Asians helped develop the bomb that would wipe out fellow Asians. And then somebody said, oh, you mean dropping a nuke on the country that slaughtered 20 million Asians in the area locally. <sighs> so this is turning. Yeah. And like I said, guys, do not be offended by this debate i'm just pulling the comments but these are real heated debates that people have yeah right? because not all asians in america are in agreement of whether the bombs were justified or not because there's a lot of different facts that go back and forth oh was japan on the verge of uh surrendering do we know that they were going to and if they were about to surrender then why did they drop the bombs they didn't need to drop the bombs especially on civilians uh, things like that or well hey uh japan's army was tearing through the rest of asia and killing a bunch of civilians this is kind of payback for what they were doing not just to pearl harbor and americans but also civilians in Asia. Yeah, I think the Asians care a lot more about what was happening in Asia at that time. Interestingly enough, Andrew, uh, Wu Jiangxiong actually graduated from Nanjing and only left like a few years before the Japanese Imperial Army came through and obviously ripped apart yeah, Nanjing. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't know what was in her heart at the time. I'm sure at the time, every scientist is just doing their job as a scientist, right? You're, you're trying to make breakthroughs. That's what you're trying to do. Now, of course, you are trying to develop this weapon. And I think a lot of them years after seeing how much destruction it did, and not only that, but seeing how every country after that developed their own nuclear bombs. Oh, because they were like, oh, nah, nah, we need one of those in case you yeah. use it on me. I need to be able to 
threaten you too. You could make an argument that 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 the whole Manhattan Project really kind of made every other country make their own nuclear bombs, which now turns into this whole nuclear thing. arms race. Now right? we're in a nuclear arms race, but I don't know. Somebody said, uh, Andrew, this is a pro male comment from uh, it's a, this Italian guy. I believe he's from Italy. He said, "What's next? You're gonna claim that Einstein's formula was stolen too, and Newton, and basically all the Western men have to like share their accomplishments with like women and POCs now." Um, what do you think of this? Oh man, it's so tough because whether it's it's K-pop giving credit to uh, music from black artists, right, right, or it's right up like all these scientists that have built on theories on top of other people. Really, everything basketball moves are based off of prior basketball players. Like I think it's but all but but built I, up. I think that it is true to to even though you, what you're saying is right, Andrew. It does seem like one group, which would be like. Western European males got the bulk of the credit for yes, all of it. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll tell you this. If those scientists or those people are still alive, like, I would love for them to show credit to the whole team that helped him out. But then... Right, you're saying if Oppenheimer was still around or something. Yeah, like, he should give a shout-out to everybody, you know, that was on the team that helped make him such a legendary person. But, of course, the leader of the group gets the first big title in history. It's right. true. And, and, and I think right now we could debate about whether they got screwed or didn't get screwed. We could look at their university salaries if they were like all lower than all the white guys, you know, all the POC and women. I'm sure it was. It, I'm sure they were. But right now, I think all we can do as consumers and people just living in 2023 is, is look into the stories and show credit. Yeah. I don't know if like white dudes stole everything. They did kind of steal the, the land from Native Americans, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh but yeah, like I don't I don't know. It's, right, it's right. hard it's to tough say, to right? parse it out, right? I mean, dude, how many white dudes probably were underneath Thomas Edison that probably didn't get all the credit that they deserve too. Right, we only know Edison too. We Unless only you're know in Edison. that field. So it, it's very very difficult to say. Um somebody just says I always wish there would be a movie about her. Mm. Yeah, you know what it is? Somebody should. Yo, somebody should make definitely a documentary and at least like a movie about her or at least like a a docu series, but and this is just a hypothetical, man. I'm thinking creatively from a movie standpoint. It would be insane if Miss Wu was actually a Japanese American working on the Manhattan Project. Oh, that's that crazy. would be a crazy storyline. Yeah. I'm not saying she. We should not change her to a Japanese American. That would be changing history. But that would be actually a crazy storyline. <laughs> oh, that would be crazy. Woo! Anyway, let's get into the takeaways. And uh, I think the cool thing what, that I realized was uh, I think this is like the stories that my my parents and their peers almost like looked up to. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were just like, man. You know, to be a great scientist, to contribute to a thing. I, I don't know if they would just because, you know, whatever the aftermath and all the horrible things that resulted because of the building of the nuclear bombs. But, like, it was cool to know that even in the 1940s, I was like, oh, man, there was, like, Chinese people that were part of American history. Because nowadays, everything is so adversarial. You're like, oh, man, there was a time yeah. where... I mean, obviously, Chinese and Americans were working together. And, and you know what it is? It is, uh, and I think everybody always talks about Chinese building the railroads, you know, uh, coming over here as, like, migrant workers, essentially, or, like, you know, working for little to and, no wages. Yeah, indentured servitude. Yeah, that. essentially. And I think this is on a different end because, you know, this is, uh, she's part of the the history of the development of the the greatest weapon ever made, you know, and America, in a way, is so proud of it as well, in a way, it's also like a dark kind of shameful aspect, but they're very proud of it. So for her to be part of this project in particular, this like very destructively American project, it is interesting. It's different than like recognizing even all railroad workers who built the railroads, which we should too. That's cool too. But also like, yeah, this is like, this is one of those projects that kind of like, uh, it kind of shocked the world. Yeah. I mean, you know? what do you think this is? Do you think it's like it takes movies to make something cool? Because I think without Oppenheimer getting released, nobody's looking into or, or not. Show, definitely you know? like the average Asian Americans, not maybe people who are into STEM who are also if we were also physicists ourselves, for sure, I'm sure we'd know her. Uh, but yeah, obviously not being in the deep in the STEM field. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Do you think it was more of because she was a woman that she got left out or or more because she was a, a person of color or Chinese? All right, let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.